Hello community. Today we experience how I define an optimized summarization prompt. So let's start. I just upload here a PDF about, I don't know, 20, 30, 40 pages about a technical summary. And I say write a technical summary of the main scientific new ideas and algorithm within this PDF. And it comes back an autonomous, yeah, I have some predefinition, okay, but it goes here trajectory annotation, contrastive self training, policy gradient methods, binarization rewards, closed loop self improvement, experimental validation, scientific contributions, and in summary. And I say, great. Now learn to be more focused on the primary topic. What is the most important idea? How it is it implemented? And what do we need from it? Then you go on to the second most important insight and so on. In this way, you build a new narrative. Try it now. GPD comes, says, yeah, beautiful. So in this A3T framework, which fundamentally transformed the training of language agents by introducing an autonomous data generation and refinement cycle. And they say, what is the most important idea? The primary insight is this, and the secondary insight is this. And that's now an interesting way to see this because this is some brand new research data. GPT-4 has never seen this data, but it comes up and says, hey, the most critical contribution is enabling language agents to autonomously generate annotated trajectories for self-improvement. This is achieved through the introduction of an agent a novel mechanism designed to retrospectively explain the reason behind any chosen action, facilitating the autonomous generation of data with minimal or no human supervision. So, this agent inverts the traditional reasoning action sequence. So we just learn something. And then for the secondary insight, it goes to contrastive self-training with policy gradient methodologies. So you see, Interestingly, that it took this particular topic as the main insight. Third insight is here a closed loop self improvement. Beautiful. And I say, hey, excellent. So write yourself a new optimized prompt to produce this kind of result from any given text to you so that I can later, tomorrow, or some other days, I can reproduce this in this style and with this form. ChatGPT says to generate a focused and hierarchical summary of any given text, especially complex scientific or technical content, use the following optimized prompt structure. And now here you have it. One, two, three key points, implementation and need, summarization, outcome, implementation, and everything. And I found this structure, it's a little bit trivial. You can optimize it, of course, to your specific need and in the next conversation. But let's go with this. And I say, great. And now write a simple example that a simple human mind, like mine, can follow, where you exemplify each and every step of the new method in the text that I've uploaded. Show me how the new idea of the text unfolds before my eyes. So you see, just talk to that GPT-4 like it's a buddy has a, hey, explain this to me. I don't get it. You notice I did not mention here the concrete title, the specific title of the PDF. So it comes now and, hey, I have now a hypothetical document. And I say, okay, 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 stop, stop, stop. Apply the last command to the given text on the A3T framework only. And so here we go again. I said, okay, applying the structured approach to summarize here A3T. And now it comes up. Says, okay, identify primary insight, core innovation, central innovation here, language agents to autonomously generate annotated trajectory for self improvement. Implementation, second highlight, contrastive self training, implementation, online additional key points, closed loop mechanisms, and so on. So you see, you build your prompt that you like in a form that you need for your understanding. And then I say, because I need to see this here in a simple example, you know, so I'm simple. I say, hey, give me a real simple, concrete example where you perform all the steps of A3T framework. We mentioned this 
in a simplified version to make me understand the inner workings and the novelty. And GPT-4, not as good as my own system, but I just want to show you here in a public available system to illustrate the A3D frameworks working in a simplified, let's consider an agent, with the scenario of navigating through a virtual kitchen to make a cup of tea. And this is an environment here, a robotic environment where object and their location can change. So identify the primary insights, autonomous annotation of agent trajectory via a specific mechanism. And as I said, our agent positioned somewhere at the kitchen entrance, decide to make a cup of tea, or this is my request. So it knows the step, but not the location of the items like the kettle, the wort, the tea bags, and so on. And as we go on and the agent decides to pick up a kettle, this is an action, a robotic action, it is unsure why this is the first step. Why does it start with picking up a kettle, searching for a kettle? And now here our explanation component kicks in, explain that to make tea, you need hot water, hence we start with the, the kettle. And then we fill in the water in the kettle and then we, you know this. So you see this reasoning that we generate now by an LLM is attached, autonomously attached to the action, enriching now the agent trajectory with this annotated data. So we have a system that explains here the active LLM, or Vision Language Active, or VLA system with the reasoning. And if we have new data, and if we have new robotic movement, and if we have a new reasoning, you know what we can do? We can learn on this data. So we have now the second insight, contrastive self-training, and we do this simply with a policy gradient method. So our typical DPO alignment. So now we say we want to align this. We know now something specific. And we use here contrastive learning. Yeah, what is it? So if the agent, the robot, chooses here to grab a tea bag before boiling the water and put it in cold water, it leads to a failed attempt. We have a cold tea. But through contrastive self-training, it learns from these mistakes and by contrasting the unsuccessful action, grabbing the tea bag first and putting it in cold water, with the successful trajectory, boiling the water first and then putting in the tea bag in the boiling water, it can adjust and optimize its strategy to prioritize finding and boiling water. So you see, this is now a loop that goes on. And here we have key points, a closed loop self-improvement is happening, an iterative refinement. Yes, yes, yes need, yes, of course, summarization. I, I like to think in this way. But we are here for the interaction for your perfect summarization prompt. So I say, nice. Can you try another time? Find another example or idea for the application of the A3T framework. Be very specific and improve your explanation and performance of explaining it step by step to me because I'm not here really familiar with this topic. And ChatGPT4 says, certainly, let's explore another application. And it says, hey, okay, we have now an AI personal shopping assistant designed to learn and adapt to its user preferences for clothing based on interaction feedback and changing fashion trends. So you see, we are now here in a completely different scenario, but we apply the same mechanism. So we have here an autonomous annotation of an agent trajectory via this new mechanism. Yes, this is for you to read. We have some contrastive self-training with policy, yeah, because Alex says, hey, I don't like this color, I don't like this material, I don't like this style, and the system learns. The system completely learns new things. So with each interaction, the AI collects more data about Alex's preferences, style, color, fabrics, and the reason behind those preferences, because could ask Alex, hey, why you don't like the jacket? And Alex might say, hey, I don't like the color, I don't like the, the cut, how it's cut, and, and so on. So I say, hey, so is this A3T framework an add-on to any LLM? ChatGPT comes back. I mean, I haven't read the paper, so this is only what I get from ChatGPT4. It's a blind test. And it says, yes, it can be considered an add-on to an LLM, and it just enhances its functionality. Provide a broad foundation of knowledge and understanding. Yes, yes, yes. That's normally here a static training data set. And now we have a dynamic interactive training data set. Yes, 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 yes. Again, 
And so I say, okay, so it's kind of a mild policy optimization based on the new data about style and color. GPT-4 comes back, yeah, that's a good way to conceptualize it, you see? And you see, sometimes you need a little bit of mental support from chat GPT-4 when it says, hey, good way, good thinking, yippee. So it goes on and on and on. And I say, try to explain this framework in its complexity in a new way. Make it easier for me to understand it immediately. So now we have the example of a smart kitchen, a smart kitchen assistant. Blending technology with human-like reasoning and adaptation. So what is the task? The idea that ChatGPT4 is trying to learn me here, the new algorithm here, is now a different scenario, a different environment. It's now a kitchen, a smart kitchen. And it says, okay, you have your kitchen. Beautiful, this is your LLM. And then you try out new recipes. You are experimenting. And I say, hey, why do I add tomatoes at this date? And the LLM comes back and tries to argue and understand why, and maybe gives me an opportunity to go another way, another path, you know? Then we can adjust the recipe. We have a contrastive self and We become a master chef after we experimented 1,000 different ingredients for our smart kitchen recipe. So simplified understanding, you know? <laughs> ChatGPT knows me and says, hey, for this body, I have to be real simple. I have to write it out explicitly. Yes, beautiful. Those are the three steps that this is doing. And I said, hey, I like this. Any other ideas to open up new scientific topic and focus on the insight with an advanced, optimized storytelling? Yeah, but this would be the topic of another thing. So you see, find your own prompt. And if you are, if you say, hey, I like this way, ask GPT for, hey, now write a prompt for me, for yourself. So I want to have this style, this format, this insight, this argumentation, this experimentation, this, maybe you add a visualization to it. And ChatGPT writes you the prompt that ChatGPT thinks is best. So conceptualizing your idea. Now I know you might say, hey, why not DSPy? Why can we not go through... 10,000 permutation. Yes, you could. But what I like is to follow my style, to read the answer, to get a feeling and say, hmm, I don't like this, but maybe I like the second point. And can I focus more on this particular part of the explanation? And can you make it easier? And can you increase here the complexity on something else? So I like here for my personal style here to create here my personal prompt. And I think this is the best way to do it. It takes you about 15, 20 minutes. And then you get an explanation. And without having read here the complete paper, now you know what is it in principle that we use it for as an LLM. You now commence your LLM here with, for example, here in the kitchen example, to adjust your recipes, explore new recipes, have a three-step methodology and it transforms a basic general knowledge smart kitchen into a personalized chef's assistant that learns and adapts to your personal cooking style, to your preferences, and the unique quirks of your kitchen, making the cooking experience better with each meal. And this is the way that I like to learn. You know, I have to be interactive. And I think, just wanted to show you this, you can do it for your style. Don't go here with, if you see in the internet, hey, this is the perfect prompt for me. Great, but this is the way you can find your perfect prompt. Enjoy it.